My name's Guy Kestevan. That is the Kona Mahuna. What you want to know is what's great about it and what needs changing. So, I've been testing for 25 years, but Kona have been around since 1988. Canadian company, and they've always had a fantastic rider reputation for really, really good handling, fun bikes. So, straight away, let's have a look at the frame. It's uh, butted 6061 aluminium, and this is actually shared right through all the Kona hardtail range, uh, right up to the Kahuna DL and from the Lanai. You get different wheel sizes. This is a twin 29er, but you can get 27.5 options, and other bikes where you get a mix of 27.5 on the smaller sizes and 29 on the larger sizes. In fact, on the Lanai, you even get 26-inch wheels on the extra small. But back to the Mahuna. It's a really decent, nicely curved frame. See, you've got this work down tube. You've got bottle cage bosses there and on the seat tube, so you've got room for two. You've got ports for a dropper post to run internally. You don't get one as standard, you get a fixed post, but you do get a QR, so it's relatively easy to drop that seat out of the way. And you get rack and mudguard. I've got that the wrong way around. <laughs> anyway, you know what I mean. You get uh, fixed amounts at the back end for cargo and utility use. And you can see, even with this 235 in here, there's a lot of room. You can actually fit a 2.6 or a 2.8 if you go for a 27.5. You get a replaceable dropper hang, you get a replaceable rear mech hanger if you clatter that Dior rear mech, but you do not get a uh, chainstay protector. Or well, there might be one in the box, but you certainly don't get a nice chunky molded one in there. So I definitely get some protection on that because I can already hear the chain slapping around on there and the paint is not gonna last long. And Although you get this nice little chainstay, this nice little forged chainstay detail in there, it's a QR axle as well, so no bolt through axle. And that is something that's shared with the front fork as well. And so QR, and it's 30 mil leg, and that's the simplest turnkey damper. I mean, that does mean you get open and a locked out position, and you do get a little plastic flag under here for your rebound, but be very subtle. I mean, one click means a lot when you're adjusting that, so you need to be careful. Plus, you're only getting a 100 mil stroke. And even if you just pull back and look at the bike, that kind of looks like it's di disproportionately short, really. I mean, and uh, you'll see from the riding footage that I think it's really gagging for a 120 mil fork in there. But on the bright side, Kona have upsized that front rotor to 180 mil for a bit more power, and you've got Maxxis Forecaster tires. One of my favourite kind of all-round, uh, all-weather, cross-country tyres. It's got decent grip in the dirt, but it still rolls pretty quick too. And you've got those tyres front and rear. Then dropping down to what's making them actually go, you've got a Samex chain set with relatively chunky looking arms and a little 28, to 28 tooth chain ring. So I think it's a really, really nice idea on a bike like this. It gives you a bit more ground clearance and it means they can fit a 46 tooth 11 speed block on the back. So you're getting 11 speed when quite a lot of bikes at this price are 10 speed. The only downside with the crank is, if you look in here, that is a skinny little square taper axle, which makes the uh, whole setup more flexible and it makes it heavier as well. Although I will give them an extra point for the fact it's called an Eternity, but with turn with a U, which, uh, so well, it made me chuckle when I was reading through the spec anyway. Into, and then back up to the top, we've got Tektro uh, 275 brakes, which are kind of as basic as they look. I mean, they're hydraulics, they're better than cable, but they are pretty numb. And also, if you're getting involved, if you find yourself twisting around in dirty weather, you're probably gonna want a lock-on grip as well, rather than these press fit ones. But you're getting a 760 mil bar and a 55 mil stem. So considering you're getting a uh, 68 degree head angle, uh, that's actually, you know, that's actually not a bad setup, especially as, you know, this is a bike because of those rack mounts and mudguard mounts, it can actually double as kind of a utility commuter as well. And then you get a relatively steep, well, certainly for this category, 75 degree seat angle. So you've actually got a uh, quite a forward seating position on the bike. But one thing I think, I mean, this is a large with a 465 mil reach, which is, yeah, it's a little on the short side, but it's acceptable. You know, it's certainly not too cramped, even with that forward seat position. But then to the XL, it jumps to a 500 mil reach and the seat tube goes from 470 mil to 530 mil. And it really feels like they're kind of missing a size between that. They're missing kind of a, I don't know. Well, maybe you'd have to make the XL the XXL, I guess. But they're really, I really feel like 
something with like a well to be honest i'd like that length seat tube that would still keep with a 470 mil seat tube but like a 4 185 mil reach and then that 120 mil fork that could be a really really good shape but then you know there's the honzo bikes if you want something really long slack and low uh because bottom bracket height on this it's reasonable it's 315 so it's not going to suffer too much if you do lengthen the front fork but i do definitely feel like uh, they're missing something in the sizing range there so that's the quick tech check done and as you can see uh, it's reasonable if not remarkable componentry for the price if i'm being kind but let's see if it's got that classic kona vibe when it comes to riding it and the really good news is that the actual frame feel is excellent it's got a really nice kind of reasonably strong vibe to it so definitely feels like there's room for some upgrade expansion on the bike but and to be fair for 100 mil that fork isn't bad either but while the uh, 30 mil legs help with it flexing a bit and adding some suspension definitely on that turning especially with these pretty numb Tectro brakes and it's uh, all a little bit tense compared to having 120 mil fork with a through axle on. You know that QR not doing the bike any favours there. But and also I don't know if you can hear it slapping around there, but definitely needs some kind of chainstay protector on the bike because chain was battering around on that chainstay and the paint's not going to last long. If it keeps doing that and obviously if you're riding steeper stuff like that then uh, a dropper post is a good idea but for more cross-country style cruising these forecaster tyres nice and predictable good all conditions grip for an XC tyre all right especially one that still rolls nice and fast and it's good to have quality rims on these WTB rims that you can turn tubeless nice and easily and I like the fact you get a 28 tooth chain ring so a bit easier to crank up chain ring also offsets the fact that you've just got an 1146 block at the back but I actually like having the tighter ratios on there feels good to me Certainly the overall gears are pretty well sorted because at 14 and a quarter key it's not the uh, lightest bike you're going to find but then you know it's not heavy either and it certainly feels sprightly enough with those forecaster tyres and it's dual 29er as well although you can get a Cindercone if you prefer a 27.5 and while it comes fitted with 2.3s, which are relatively narrow, it will take a 2.6 in the back. Again, you are going to need a different fork to get that size of tyre up front. So, but for, you know, spinning along stuff like this, I guess green, blue grade routes, if this wasn't Riverside, if it was a official, then actually it's pretty smooth got a little flag rebound damper on it need to be very very careful how you adjust that though because one click means a big deal and as you can see forecasters will get you up a reasonable amount and if you're seated that 75 degree seat angle also gives you a, a good climbing position but you definitely get more power transfer through a fixed axle crank rather than a square taper and it would likely save a fair amount of weight so that's another item to put on the upgrade list for sure but the way you know where it buzzes across little bars like that very very cultured in terms of the frame and while it definitely seems like there's a missing size in the range between that 465 500mm up to reach figures being large and excel whoa oh it's just that 
QR4 can, you know, 100 mil, 30 mil legs. It's all a bit of a perfect storm. That means the front just can't keep up with what the rest of the bike is promising to deliver. But then, as I said in the tech talk, that's pretty common for this kind of price range these days. And while the handling is definitely on the uh, tight and almost a little nervy side, definitely not slack, lazy and steezy, it actually helps when you kind of, whoop, <laughs> trying to twitch it through tight stuff. But again, that's something else that'd be improved if you put a slightly longer fork in the bike. And one aspect of the geometry I didn't touch on before is the fact that it's got a really long 450 mil chain stays. And I think that helps give it that really surprisingly smooth and flowing ride. It's genuinely not far off a decent steel bike in terms of the way it kind of smooths and glides over chatter and chunk. That's probably the most impressive aspect about this bike is the frame quality and obviously you know that's something that's always going to be with the bike. Upgrading is relatively easy but if the frame quality is not there then there's no point and obviously at this sub thousand pound price point things are really keen but also I feel like it's the category that's been most hit by price rises recently so you're definitely not getting the bike you were a couple of years ago you know even if you look at Boardman and online stuff it's you can see compromises in the spec and considering when I went online you can find this bike for 15% cheaper than RRP fairly easily it's actually a really good it's actually a decent value package especially as the frame feels so good and there's a lot to like about it in terms of the componentry but definitely it feels like a 120mm fork ideally with a through axle would really I mean you can hear, you can hear I'm kind of hanging on here would really help the Mahuna really get the most out of it because it definitely wants to pick up speed and play around but while it's okay for comfort that fork is holding it back for several reasons on the front but obviously if you want through axle you're gonna have to upgrade the front wheel as well because it's QR hub but in terms of that naturally fun Kona play ride there's plenty of this in the bike, for sure. And that's definitely the main thing here. So in summary, Kahona Mahuna, really good looking, sweet riding, Trail 29er hardtail. That, if you shop around, isn't bad value at all. But like a lot of bikes in this price category, you definitely uh, want to upgrade the fork at your first opportunity, something a bit more longer, a bit fatter, a bit more controlled to really get the full potential out of this bike. And on this one, i definitely consider upgrading the chain set as well. But thanks very much to Scott at Kona UK for sending the bike in. And keep your eyes peeled for a process review very shortly too. Uh, massive thanks to Giro Cycling UK, PTs and Crud for sponsoring the channel. Thanks for Julbo for the specs too. And massive thanks as always to my Patreon subscribers who pledge a small amount monthly to uh, help keep the cameras rolling and keep the lights on in the workshop. So if you like what I'm doing with the channel, please consider supporting uh, me on Patreon. We're getting more and more subscribers on there every day, which is fabulous. But even if you can't manage that at the moment, please subscribe on YouTube, click for notifications, give this a thumbs up and tell your mates about the channel. Word of mouth recommendation from you to your mates is the best way to keep this channel growing. But for now, I've been Guy Kestevan on Guy Kest TV, testing the new 2022 Kona Mahuna.